Right, just gonna tell everyone I'm going live because I know they'll be moaning if I'm late. Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. If you're watching live, sorry I'm a bit late. A bit of a problem with the audio as per usual, says Footy Freak. You're always the Dream Team! Quite, but uh, I am a little bit late tonight. So let's fly into it. Let's get the live comments open. What I want to talk about tonight, there's quite a few things. Um, Paul Pogba obviously has joined Manchester United. Don't want to dwell on that too much, apart from the fact of who should he play within the midfield. That's quite a big thing. There's also Daily Blind, One Matter, rumours that they're going to go, um, and also Yanisai, and a few other things we need to discuss. But I just want to drop you back into... Well, pinch yourself, because this summer has been fantastic, hasn't it? While I sort this uh, live comments out for you, this summer's been like a dream. And sometimes I do find myself sitting there uh, almost pinching myself, like I say, is it real? Has it really happened? It has happened, of course. It is real. Um, but you know what? What if we had still got Louis van Hal in charge? I mean, it was a reality for us. A lot of people thought that it might happen. Uh, thankfully, it didn't happen. But it could have happened. And if he was in charge, what would have happened? Well, he's back. He Why not try it with a swan this year? With a Felipe Anderson, Sado Mani, and Romelu Lukaku. And we would have probably spent what we've spent on Zlatan, Pogba, Mkhitaryan and Bay. What a scary thought that is. I thought I'd share it with you. Because we'd have spent about four, 35 to 40 million on, on uh, Mane. We'd have spent 40 million on Felipe Anderson. And we'd have probably spent 60 million on Lukaku. So that's like 140 straight away, isn't it? Um, and it could have happened. It could have happened. We were probably a goal away from that happening. We finished fourth on goal difference. And if we'd got a result against West Ham or somebody else, he'd probably still be here. Um, just thought I'd share that with you while we get the live comments up. But what did I want to start off? Well, let's, have, let's start off with Pogba. Let's start off on a positive and get rid of all that Lou Van Hell stuff. Um, problem with the sound. Dan Reed, sorry mate, I, I know I was going to get you on, but I didn't hear from you, so I, I've just had to go live, sorry pal. Um, a ducking swan, the sound, it should be alright, I hope it's okay, it, it's fine, it's fine. Um, can somebody tell me if the sound, Mark, buh, 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 buh. Adam G, we do it on a Sunday mate, and uh, we will do more than that, but... Uh, right, somebody... Is is it is the sound working? Because I'm just uh, whacking on here. There's no problem with the sound at all. Right, so yeah, Pogba. Pogba, who do you play with him in midfield? I would go with... Um, it's difficult because we need to bring pace into the midfield for me. I want your comments because it's only me. It's only for me tonight. Unfortunately, we've had that mix up with Dan. Um, so... Pogba brings pace. For those who don't know anything about Pogba, he's quite quick. He's good at running with the ball and driving with the ball. I would play Carrick in the midfield for the moment because I just don't think Schneidlin's got the confidence or fitness to play there. However, I wouldn't mind seeing Schneidlin play there because he's quicker than Carrick. But Carrick, for the moment, brings us some stability, gives us the ball. But what I think is really important, really, really important, is that number 10 is mobile. Not necessarily fast mobile, but mobile with the ball. I think Mata or Mkhitaryan would work better with Pogba than Rooney. So my midfield, if I was being blunt and honest, and I won't get this, is I'd have... Carrick, Pogba, and probably, probably Mata, and then put Mkhitaryan on the right, because I think if we put Mkhitaryan in the middle, then you've got Lingard on the right, and as much as I like Lingard, and as much as he's a decent squad player, he's not a first team player, and it will cause us problems, so that was what I would do, I think Mata is a good receiver of the ball, he's good in tight situations, and when he's got the ball, he moves it quick, he can do first touch, and all that sort of things, that Rooney just doesn't do, so I think you can get away with Carrick and Pogba, Carrick's obviously got no pace, and Pogba has, but I think you can't have Carrick, Pogba, and Rooney, because then it's like Pogba's the only pace, and it's easy for a midfield to deal with that. You've got to be able to mix it up. Carrick being slow, Pogba fast, and Rooney with unreliable first touch and passing, and not that fast, makes us quite sluggish in the midfield, and everything's focused on Pogba. But we have got options. You've got Schneider, like I say, if he comes into form. You've got Herrera, who bombs about. You've got Mata, you've got Mkhitaryan. So we have got options. I do think we will we will start on Sunday with Carrick, not even Pogba and Rooney. It might even be Fellaini. We might have a really static midfield, but we'll just have to see. Um, Fionton Cahill says, if Carrick plays, Rooney shouldn't. It would be way too slow. I agree. Um, Rooney needs to drop, says Sohel. 
Uh, Connor McKillen says, "Talk about fan TV yesterday. We can talk about a little bit of that at the end if people want, if people saw it. Um, what I want to say is just thanks to everybody who went over to fan TV after us and watched it. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought we did really well. Um, and judging what by their viewing figures tonight, um, I think most most of their viewing figures were from the United Stand. So massive thanks for that. If we go on again, please come over. That's great. But." Um, Pratap says Fellaini can be a good squad rotation player. I would rather have him rotating as vegetables and dig him under the ground like a carrot. Um, Rooney's time is up now, says Lanky Snake 942 Pogba and Carrick uh, smiling. Mikey Booth, I thought it was a sad face, but he's smiling. Uh, Munib Chowdhury, Fozu Mendes signs new five-year contract. We knew that was on the horizon. and I think there were some ridiculous rumours before that he might end up leaving or being sold. Ridiculous. Um, Jade Cohen says, Mark, why is Rooney pay playing so slow? Because he's getting old, really. That's that's the reality. Uh, make a video on the United Stand story, says Dolan182. We will when we hit 40,000 subscribers. We're, I think we're about 500 off, so not far off. Uh, Bailey and Blind at centre-back, brilliant partnership. Yeah, uh, not for me. Um, I think we'll get by, but I think if we want to win the league... No. Would you rather have two Fellaini's on the midfield or get Joe Allen, says we S. Uh, don't need to answer that because it's never going to happen. Um, Aaron St Stock, thank you. Uh, Jeff and Joes. Mark, we need to sign a centre-back, says Sohil. We do. Play Mickey on the right, Pogba and Carrick Morgan, centre midfield, and Matter at the number 10. Yeah, I quite like that. That's from Blame the Pickle. Uh, Memphis at 10, maybe. I'm glad Farley mentioned that. A couple of people have uh, sort of messaged me privately and said... Uh, Muggy Ruffy wants me to talk about Paddy. I think I know who you're on about. But a couple of people have mentioned this to me and said, what about Mem Memphis at 10 or Rashford at 10 or Martial at 10? I think only one of those three could get away with it, and that's Rashford, because I think he pretty much can play anywhere at the moment with confidence. Um, Mem Memphis can't play at number 10. He's control of the ball in tight situations. He's, he's horrific. Um, he'd be worse than Rooney. You know, Rooney gets a lot of stick, but Memphis would be worse at number 10. Martial, again, he's not a number 10. A number 10's got to be like a magnet because you've got to move around in the most compact area with defensive midfielders and centre-backs and all sorts around you. You've got to move around very fast. You've got to take the ball, get the control and pass it off quick. That's not what Memphis's game is. Memphis's game is getting the ball on the wing where he's got a full-back and maybe a winger close to him and then running at them. It's not That's what, not what a number 10 does in my mind. Uh, Riley Wincott says uh, he thinks Carrick's long gone. So I, I would go Pogba, Carrick, and then I, I want some, like I said, I, you've got to play Matter or Mkhitaryan because if you play Rooney, it's too slow. But Pogba's not going to be ready on Sunday. So uh, I think um, we were asked a question by one of our patrons. Thank you. Um, Rob Kenstrom, I think it was. Uh, do I think Pogba will play on Sunday uh, for half an hour? I think he'll be on the bench and I think he might get on. Uh, so that's a positive. Um, Paddy McNair was asked about there. Obviously, he's gone. I was on fan TV last night. I said it was Sunderland, and, they, and there was a Sunderland fan sat on the sofa, and they were like, he's gone to uh, Burnley. It was Sunderland. He's gone to Sunderland. It's a shame about Paddy McNair. I've said it before. Two years ago, he had his debut, did really well, uh, but Van Howe destroyed him. He destroyed him by taking him off after half an hour a couple of times, and I think he never recovered from that, and as a young player, it's very difficult. Um, so wish him all the best. He might do quite well. I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he did something like James Chester's done, or or even Johnny Evans, you know, be that sort of mid-table, decent centre-back. And he's young enough to, uh, um, you know, maybe do well at Sunderland. If he does really well, he might get a decent move to somebody else. So you never know. I think he, I did think he had the potential at one point. Um, Daily Blind, let's talk about him. A lot of people love Daily Blind, I know. Um, Inter Milan, got a new manager now. Mancini's left. Uh, De Boer's taken over. He's obviously Dutch, and apparently he said go out and get Daily Blind. I'm sure he would say that. I, you know, Daily Blind in the Italian league or the Spanish league where it's slower and he can get time on the ball, Daily Blind would be very good. I still think his best position is left back. Um, I don't think he's a Premier League winning centre back over a whole season. I think he's a great utilities player and a wanting to stay at Manchester United. Um, I don't think we'll sell him. I'm sure Inter Milan probably do want to buy him. If they came in and offered 20 million, I think he's too important as a utility squad, and I think that's been proved with the first game of the season. Smalling suspended, you've got Bay who's going to play, and Blind is better than Rojo and Jones. I mean, that's the thing. You take Blind out, and you've got Rojo, Rojo or Jones playing this weekend. So that's the importance of Blind. I've been saying it for a couple of months now. I don't really want him to be sold. I don't think he's got a place in the first team squad because Shaw's a better left back, there's better defensive midfielders, and we've got better centre backs. But as a squad player, he's invaluable. I don't want him to go. So it'd be interesting to see. I don't think we'll sell him. Um, Blind is very useful. He needs to say, stay, says Matt James. 
Uh, what about Blind as a defensive midfielder? Says George. Uh, we played there. He played there when we first signed him, and even Van Hal saw that didn't work in the Premier League. He's too slow. Well, he's got a lot of time on the ball. He's got a very good pass, and he's a good reader of the ball. But in defensive midfield, he's too slow. He gets away with it as a centre back because you can drop and you can read the game. But in the midfield, it's just not quick enough. And Fozu Menza, Carrick, Schneidlin, even Schweinsteiger are better options. I tell you, what, I just want to do a little bit of a. Na, 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 na. Sad story of the day, Schweinsteiger. I actually looked on his Twitter and for the last week or so, he's been tweeting all the best mate, Rooney, when it was his testimonial. Congratulations to the lads winning the Community Shield. I've been doing I've been doing some fitness work today and I'm in Manchester, happy, you know, hope everyone's okay. I feel so sorry for him. I feel so, so sorry for him, the way he's been frozen out. And I don't think Rooney even retweeted the thank you message. Um, I think it's abysmal, really. Um, not that he's... If Jose doesn't want him as part of the team, that's fine. I've said that. Or the squad, that's fine. I just don't. I don't think. I just don't think he, a player like Schweinsteiger should be being frozen out by any club. It just made me feel a bit sad. Um, Blind is decent, says Craig Farrell. Yeah, who to go for in January? Says Cole Chang. Well, we've not started the season yet, Cole. Let's see what happens there. Al Diego Rojo is our worst defender. I would agree, agree, agree with that. Max Morin says, "Give Jones a blooming chance." How many chances do you want to give him, Max? He's, he's made of glass, um, he's useless, um, he's Calamity Jones, and he's always injured. Um, rubbish. I, I, I wouldn't give him any chances more than he's had. He's been here a long time as well. He's been here a long time. How, you know, how many years has he been here? Must be, must be over four. And, uh, you know, he's been injured for most of that. So we'd go. Read my comment, please. We can do Pogba and Morgan, says Sam and FC. Yeah, I just think Schneidlin's not ready yet, but neither's Pogba. So... Uh, I think it's not a massive season for Schneidlin. Next one I want to talk about is Juan Mata. Um, this was in the Times, for those who aren't from the UK. They're quite, uh, well, they're a very, very old UK paper. A very good reputation. Basically saying Juan Mata wants to leave Manchester United, but Jose doesn't want to sell him. Um, we saw the silly comments last weekend from the likes of um, the BBC, Danny Murphy, Scouser, Bitter, um, saying that... Uh, Jose had mugged him off, subbing him after the Community Shield and embarrassed him in front of the world. I never thought I never thought that at all. But uh, if Mata's now unhappy, Mata doesn't strike me as the sort of person who's unhappy. I don't know about what you lot think. Um, and also, I think Jose sort of said it in his own comments, uh, I think it was today or yesterday, that he was talking about his midfield and he was saying at number 10, we've got Mata, Rooney and Mkhitaryan. Well, you need options at number 10. If we sold Mata, we already have a lot of concerns about Rooney. Um, and then if Mkhitaryan gets injured, who's playing at number 10? Because I would say Pereira, but he's not even part of the first team squad. Um, Mata has to stay. I think it's encouraging that Jose wants him to stay. Um, he's going to be a bench player. That's what he's going to be. But he will be useful, um, especially if Rooney doesn't produce. So I don't want him to go. Archie B02 says Mata is better than Rooney. Uh, Mata seems happy always, says Al Digo. Blah, 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 says Jose Marino. How far do you see is going in the Europa League, Mark, says Mooney. We'll talk about that in a minute. We're talking about Mata. Mata has good friends at United, Herrera and De Gea, says Sion. Yeah, but you know what? If Mata was offered Barcelona or Valencia or something like that, he might do it. He's Spanish and uh, he might want to play football. He's coming towards not the end of his career, but he wants to be playing. He's in his mid to late 20s, isn't he now? So he does want to be playing. Um, you never know what's going on behind closed doors. If it had been in the Mail or the Daily Star or the Mirror, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. But because it was in the Times, I thought, mm, you know, there might be something in that. And the fact that it was more Matter wanting to leave than, than Marino wanting to get rid of him, um, I thought it was, it was quite interesting. But I think he will stay as well. I think Blind will stay. The next one, Adnan Yanisai. Might be a bit uh, controversial again, but... Um, He's not happy. He's embarrassed that he's he's not he's not training with the main squad. He's training with the youth. He's embarrassed. He doesn't want a loan move. He wants to leave. Personally, pack your bags. Pack your bags and go, Adnan, because um, a couple of years ago, I was very anxious for you to stay. I didn't want you to become the next Paul Pogba. Um, thought you were going to be a really good player. But as I've said countless times, I've never known a youth player regress and do nothing with their development at key years in their development apart from arsenal players um Walcott, chamberlain for two years it's ridiculous he had that he had that good year under moyes and then since then van hal played him both novembers about four games in a row and he did absolutely nothing he went to dortmund he got sent back he's not progressed in two years and you've got to say why is that 
And when I watch him now, I actually look at him and I think, well, what are you actually good at? You look gangly when you're running. You're not quick. You seem to get, you seem to trip over the ball. You haven't got much of a cross. You haven't got much of a shot. Um, you're not that good at running past players. I think he's regressed so, so bad. I think he had potential. But you look at the likes of Callum Gribbin in the youth team and some of the young lads coming through there. They're the future. I think Yanisai's had two years and he's blown it. And you're not part of the first team squad because you're not good enough to be blunt. Whatever anybody thinks, he's just not good enough. So I'm sorry, Adnan, you can be embarrassed, but uh, I think your form's been embarrassing for two years. And uh, I think it's time for you to move on, mate. I really do. Um, nearly as bad as Memphis, says uh, Baconland. Adios Adnan, says Craig Farrell. Hello, Mark, says Emric. Yanisai is better than Pereira, says Dwarfy15. I disagree. Uh, can Rooney ever be dropped out for bad form, says Aditya Jaiswell. No, Adolf Hitler's here with the, the German flag. Um, four good games, then he got rumbled, says Carlos F. Uh, Yanisai equals the Belgian Beppe, says Dan Miola. Yanisai loan out, says Dan Butterworth. I think we're past that, Dan, to be honest. I really do. I think he's, his loans have been tried. I think let's get some money. And I think um, Moyes obviously likes him because he had that best form with him. If we can get, well, we've got, we got about six million for Paddy Manair. Um If we can get that for, uh, if we can get, you know, 10 million for Yanisai, I think we'd snap their hands off. I bet we won't get that because we sell badly. But bye-bye Yanisai, says uh, Jason Shang. Um... Mark, what would you do if Adnan leaves and becomes a world glass player, says Salim. Well, he could take up a new occupation, I suppose, in uh, making glass, but um, I know you meant world class. Um, what if? What if? Um, if he does, what? so what? Is that Manchester United's fault? Should we be resentful of that? Um, no. He's had, this is the thing, he's had, he's had two years and done nothing. If he goes on and becomes a world class player, I would say... Why, why, why didn't you do that at United? It's your own fault. So, yeah, let him go. Give everyone to Sunderland, says Indian Awesome Tube. Fellaini's the one we want to go. Um, really do want him to go. Thanks, Neil. Uh, we need to buy 10 before the end of the transfer window, says Christopher Wright. I can't see us buying a number 10. Um, Farley on about Mkhitaryan in the first team. It's interesting. I was doing my fantasy Premier League team tonight. So for those who've uh, joined ours, welcome. The battle will start on Saturday. Um, and I, without giving too much away... I was looking at my midfield, I had 9.5 million to spend, and I was thinking about whether to go for Pogba, who's 8.5 million, Mkhitaryan, 9.5 million, Martial, 9.5 million. Over a season, I'd go Mkhitaryan, because he's got goals and assists all over him. But I'm not convinced he's going to start on Sunday. Martial will, so I was like, mm, I don't know. I want to go Mkhitaryan, is what I want to do, but I'm just, I've got a concern as to where he's going to play, because he'll play Lingard, and he'll play Rooney, so Mkhitaryan will be on the bench. Um, Phil Cor wants Rooney to go. Draw to your late. Oh, he's here. Troubles, uh, troubles here. Uh, Fellaini is an old co. Fonte is an old co. Kid. I'd read the wrong thing. Max Morin loves Fellaini. He's our best player. Uh, what's the fantasy league code? Says Munib Chowdhury. I don't know. There's a video somewhere, and I, I can't get it for you at the moment. But uh, what's the fantasy league code? Somebody, somebody, if they could find it, that'd be really useful. Um, it's on our videos. Um, just come, you know, if someone wants to pop off onto our video list and find Fantasy Premier League video. Um, I think it must be about 20 down the list. Um, and then you can all enter it. Um, or if not, I'll put it up afterwards on a tweet and in the video description for you. Um, Red Memphis, I've heard Mickey hasn't settled into England lifestyle and football yet. Maybe he'll be slowly brought into it. Good point, Red Memphis, really good. Any news on Lozano, says Raul. No, he's at the Olympics. And I think if he was ever going to sign, it was going to be after. Kendos Game Shot says, like the video. Yeah, that's always helpful. Uh, Griezmann has a... Fellaini reminds me of a microphone. Pereira says, Dan Reed. Fellaini is class. Wow, what's going on with all this Fellaini? Fellaini stuff. Um, I think he eventually... Thoughts on thoughts, thoughts on Tahir Chong, says Tasty. Yep, yeah, confirmed by the club. We've known it for a long time that he's part of the youth setup. And the lad from uh, The Name Escapes Me that we signed from Brentford. So that's another two young lads coming in. Drawty Devil says we need a centre-back and a right-back. Totally agree with that. Uh, Mustafi obviously going to go to Arsenal. We were talking about him a couple of weeks ago. Wouldn't have minded him. Wouldn't have minded him. Um, still cling on to the hope that we might get Manalas. I mean, obviously, two of the centre-backs we sort of spoke about over this summer. Stones and Mustafi gone. Benucci's not realistic. Um, Koulibaly, um, he's not signed for Chelsea yet, as he? Manalas, I would like. Uh, right back, I still think Fabinho's on. I really do from Monaco. Whatever anybody thinks about it, I do. Um, 
Mark, what do you think about Fozu Menza transfer news? Very happy, Mohamed. Uh, he's got a great future. And people talk about defensive midfielders, but at some point, I think that's his position. He reminds me of Michael of Essien. Michael of Essien. Michael Essien. Um, Jose loved Michael Essien and got the best out of him. Um, I can see that's where he's going to end up. I really can, but um, we shall have to see. He's probably not ready yet. He's probably not ready, let's be honest. Um, Fellaini better than Messi. Max Moran's on it tonight. Doesn't it make more sense for Pogba to make a debut at Old Trafford for the reception, says QWERTY. You know what? I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick you up on that, QWERTY. Um, I know where you're coming from, but it makes more sense to get three points on Sunday. I think three points on Sunday is essential. I know it's early days, but we've got to get off to a decent start. We can win this title. I think we win the title, but we've got to win games like on Sunday. There can't be any excuse for me. They've had a month, uh, you know, over a month. Uh, of training to get used to things and I'm, I totally back Jose the players have got to perform on Sunday no excuses about getting used to a system this that and the other they've had, we've had three years of excuses from the players a lot of it granted Van Hal was a disaster and playing under Moyes must have been difficult but you've got a decent manager now what we need on Sunday if you've not grasped the tactics that, and how to play under Jose yet totally if you just go out and give 100% effort like Bournemouth will Let's grind the result out on that because we haven't seen much effort from Manchester United over the last two years. We haven't seen much passion, desire or understanding for the shirt because you've been suppressed by a, a dictatorial manager. But on Sunday, if you can't get it right tactically and you, you're, not, you're not quite feeling it as a team yet, fine. But get, go out there, fight and give the effort and get the three points. We've got to get the three points on Saturday, uh, Sunday. Sorry. And if Pogba's on the bench then and we're not performing... Get him on. Get him on. I know it'd be nice for him to... It doesn't matter. It'll make no difference whether he comes on for half an hour on Sunday and then plays the full game the following Friday at home. It doesn't matter. He'll still get a massive applause no matter what. So get him involved. Um, the lead code is 65547-22647. I think that's our code. 65547-22647. That's 65547-22647. Two two six four seven, and it's the Fantasy Premier League uh, website. It's the proper one. So uh, there we go. Um, Mark, if you could buy one player for free, who would it be? Ali Rashid. Um, I'm a romantic. I'd bring Ronaldo back. Try and try and fit him into the team at the moment. That's amazing. Uh, when is the only rules, result? Says Robert Burns. Yep, yeah, totally. And don't forget, obviously, Sunday the watch along. It's, you've joined us for all the pre-season watch alongs. It's been absolutely fantastic. Hopefully it'll be me and Dan who didn't make it on tonight, but hopefully me and Dan on Sunday. Kickoffs half past one UK GMT. Um, so we'll be on air from an hour before at half past midday. Um, do join us for that. It's the first one. It's exciting. We've been quite passionate. I remember, you know, the Pereira goal against Wigan. I went absolutely mad. Some people said it was over the top. We've had the Community Shield. We've had Galatasaray, Zlatan's goals. But on Sunday is where it all starts. And as you can tell from me, it's win or bust. Obviously it's not bust. But want to win. Someone's asking Dan when he's coming on. If he's on the comments, ask him if he's going to do the uh, the watch along on Sunday. But um, yeah, so you'll see a lot of passion on the watch along, and we need the United Stand Army with us as per usual for that. So put it in your diary for Sunday. The watch along. Watch the game however you want to, but just mute it down and join in with all us lot on the live comments and the watch along for the game. Really excited. Two days to go. The football season starts. The Jose reign begins. And we've got such a such a good squad, such a good squad. I said it today. I don't even care who anybody else signs because they haven't signed Zlatan, Mkhitaryan, Pogba, and Jose, have they? Uh, so un unbelievable. Um, Marino said he will buy four positions. Says Oscar James, he did, and he has. Um, Cole Chang saying, "What striker would you sign after Ibra?" Well, I don't necessarily think we need to. <laughs> That's what Rashford and Martial are for. You know, they're young lads who will be world class. Um, so hopefully in a couple of years ago, a couple of years, um, they'll be a couple of years older. We'll buy another young one who can be there. So uh, there we go. Um, Jesha, Jehad, ignore you. Um, Marino said he'll buy. Yeah, so I've already spoken about that. Stop talking about winning the league. Well, it's the Premier League is about to start. The Premier League is about to start. It's the perfect time to say what your Premier League predictions are going to be. Which reminds me, on Saturday, a few of you have asked for this. So on Saturday, we'll be putting a video up of Premier League predictions, 
top scorer, who's going to get relegated, this, that and the other, just to buy into the Premier League opening day. The United stand will talk about that. But obviously it will have a very, very big United slant because some of those positions around top assist maker and all that lot, I believe Manchester United players will be in the mix. So looking forward to that. Anything else I needed to discuss? Mane, Anderson, blah, blah, blah. schedule, fan TV, Kev, predictions. Right, OK. I think we've covered it all. I'll take a question. Do you think we could win Europa League, says Riley Winkart. I've been quite consistent about this. I don't give a damn about the Europa League. I think it's it's a dangerous thing. I think everybody who's done well in the Europa League, you look at Liverpool and Spurs in previous years, it destroys their league form. And what do you get for winning the Europa League, apart from a shitload of games? You win a tin pot European Cup and you win a place in the Champions League. We'll get the Champions League this year by finishing in the top four. And that's not a cup I'm bothered about. I'm really not. You play so many games to win that cup. It's nothing. I'd probably rather win the FA Cup. and the Well, I'd rather win the league than the Europa League. That's my priority. So it's there we go. Um, we've done McIntyre on the bench. City will finish outside the top four, says Ashley Hutton. Very brave comment. I wouldn't even say that's going to happen. So there we go. Uh, thoughts on Dybala, says Al Diego. Yeah, good player. He's not going to come to United, though. Um... United stand, you got hacked. Yeah, very good video that was, if anyone's not seen it. Um, I love Europa League, says Andrew Lou. Someone's got to. Um, nine points before playing against City would be nice. We, that's what we've got to go for. That's what we've got to go for. And uh, the Premier League code, if you've not done it, I've just spent about half an hour on it before I came on air. Uh, Premier League code, it's the Fantasy Premier League website, and our code is 655-47-47. 22647. I think there's about there was about 500 people in it when I checked it two weeks ago, so there might be uh, quite a few more. Um, Jackson Lynch says we're, we're almost at 40,000 subscribers, and I say we because it is the United Stand and it is your channel. And um, yeah, when we do that, we'll do the story of the United Stand, which I think some of you will find quite interesting. I'll do it live as well, and I'll probably try and get some guests on as well who've been part of it. Um, just a bit of fun one night for you if you want that to be done, but um. Yeah, I just wanted to finish up on the fan TV thing. Obviously went straight live from there to there. Um, I think it's a great concept. I think it's a really good concept and I really enjoyed doing it. But as I said at the start, thanks for all you lot who came over because we obliterated it on YouTube with their views. I think they were struggling to get around 30 and we took it up to about 700 while I was on for 20 minutes. So great, really enjoyed that. Um, hopefully we'll have a van cam back tomorrow from Kev. I know some of you like that. Um, as I said, we've got Premier League prediction video coming up on Saturday. And then the watch along on Sunday. Join us for that from lunchtime, about half past 12, for the first Manchester United Premier League game of the season. I'm saying them words and I'm getting excited. I can't wait for it. I hope when we do Sunday Night Live at half past eight on Sunday, as per usual, we'll be talking about a win. But, it, you know, I love talking about transfers. I think we've had a great talk, summer talking about that. And I still think there's three, three weeks, is it? Of transfers to talk about and I, th I think there will be a couple more United players coming in and I think there will be a few going out the door so we'll still be doing the shows every night talking transfers but the great thing now is we're going to have real games to analyse we're going to have real decisions to talk about and we're going to have real concerns or hopeful hopefulness hopefully um, to discuss and that excites me a lot because it's the football that I love um, thanks everybody for watching keep watching keep liking the videos keep subscribing um, Sorry we didn't get Dan on. Sorry to Dan as well, but he'll hopefully be on the watch along on Sunday with me. I think he's already said yes. And, you know, sometimes we just do it with you on the live comments and you make the show anyway. So thanks everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday night. We'll be back with videos, obviously, tomorrow, Saturday. And uh, any transfer news we'll react to. I'm not hearing anything at the moment, though. But the big one's the watch along on Sunday. Unite the United Stand Army and join us on Sunday for the watch along. Can't wait. First game of the season. Really excited. Who knows what's going to happen. Um, have a good day, night, evening, wherever you are, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.